And then vasculitis can be puzzling because vasculitis can start up in any organ. It can therefore cause a lot of variable symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms are kind of vague to begin with. Um, and so they can be difficult to recognize. They can be difficult to recognize both for the patient and also from the physician perspective. So for example, if we think about ankyvasculitis, oftentimes some of the initial symptoms are just not feeling well. So there may be excessive fatigue, uh, not feeling well, maybe a low-grade fever, but then GPA and MPA can cause inflammation in the eyes, which will cause redness, pain. There is often inflammation in the sinuses, so patients will have recurrent sinus inflammation. They may have been on a number of antibiotics to try to treat some sinus infection, which really doesn't often uh, help very much. There may, there may be symptoms related to hearing. There may be symptoms oftentimes of muscle aching, joint pain, joint inflammation, meaning joint swelling and uh, joint stiffness. There may be symptoms related to lung inflammation, such as cough, such as coughing of blood or pain in the chest. There may be blood in the urine. There may be symptoms of nerve damage, and that often uh, starts up as numbness or tingling in the arms or the legs. There may be symptoms in the belly where there are belly pains or perhaps bleeding with bowel movements. So the idea here is to really help you all understand that the symptoms can be many, many uh, different ones. And sometimes if the uh, predominant symptom, for example, starts with eye inflammation, the patient may seek care at an eye doctor. Um, this patient may be going to an ENT doctor first. This patient may be going to a rheumatologist. This person may start up with a lung specialist. This person may start up with a kidney specialist and so on and so forth. So you can see why there is a, um, why so many doctors are involved because you have all these different uh, body areas that are affected and why sometimes it's difficult for a physician to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and really say, you know, putting this and this and this and this all together maybe really um, that we're dealing with something like GPA and, and MPA. So here are some pictures to help explain. This is uh, a patient with inflammation in the eyes, a condition called scleritis, which causes a lot of redness of the white of the eye, inflammation and pain. This is a scan of a patient with ankyvasculitis who has these lung spots or nodules and who has a lot of cough and breathing symptoms. This is vasculitis in the skin, which causes this rash that we call purpura, these reddish purplish blotches on the skin. This is somebody who has a wrist drop, meaning they're not able to uh, elevate and use their hand because there is nerve damage from vasculitis. So again, the uh, the point here is that vasculitis can affect many different parts of the body, sometimes at the same time, and that can make it uh, difficult for uh, physicians to really uh, pinpoint the diagnosis. When we talk about large vessel vasculitis, some of you may have giant cell arteritis or Takeyasu arteritis. Again, there may be weeks and months of symptoms such as fatigue or low-grade fever. In giant cell and in Takeyasu, there may be loss of blood supply to the eyes, which can lead to loss of vision or even blindness. Again, joint inflammation and muscle pain is common. There may be neurologic symptoms such as dizziness or headache. If the blood vessel to the arms is affected, then there may be pain in the arm. When one is using the arms, there may be belly pain. So again, the idea is that we are referring to symptoms that affect different body parts, may be difficult for physicians to recognize and um, lead to that delay in the diagnosis that we mentioned. <clears throat> 